All right, so chapter 12, section five now. I don't want the title to fool you here, radiation of multicellular life. It doesn't mean radioactivity. It means the spreading of multicellular life, right? So how it started and how did it spread? Uh, first is this idea that life used to be only in the ocean and then was found on land. And we can tell that because we never found any like fossils on land until a certain point, which we're cool with. And uh, it wasn't until we got to land that we started finding multicellular fossils. Uh, I'm never going to ask you the dates, but it was a while ago. And you're going to hear this more often, especially as you go through college and stuff. It's Cambrian explosion. It was this period of time on Earth where a lot of different animals that were predators started coming around. So before this Cambrian explosion, there was a lot of soft bodies kind of floating around. Uh, and these soft bodies, uh, I like to call them soft bodies, they weren't really good at hiding. They weren't really good at defending themselves because they never had to. And all of a sudden, these organisms that could hunt and kill came around. And then it forced these soft bodies into a more defensive posture. So the ones that uh, were unable to defend themselves died. And the ones that were able to defend themselves, even just a little bit, made babies. And little by little, over time, you started getting uh, this predator-prey interaction. And the better the predator got at hunting, the better the prey had to be at hiding or getting away. If the predator won and killed all the prey, well, then they ate them all. That's it. If the prey won, then the predators would starve. So, but usually it was this balance between the two. And uh, so the, this is a drawing of some of the organisms we think may have moved onto Earth, onto the land, right? And uh, what it might have looked like, but th this is a theory, okay? This is just an idea. I mean, a theory is a hypothesis based on fossils that we found and what, what we think uh, might have been life on Earth. Something that would be a beneficial limb for the water and land, uh, something, an organism that would maybe need to breathe, but uh, still could be in the water for a long period of time, in between the two worlds, if you will. Uh, meso, think reptiles. Uh, so if you're thinking in the Mesozoic, uh, think reptiles. And 248 to 65, and this is everyone's favorite dinosaurs and birds and flowering plants and the first mammals. Little known fact, humans and dinosaurs were never on Earth at the same time. Hominids and dinosaurs were never on Earth at the same time. There were millions of years between them. So the fantasy of having a human fight a dinosaur is just that. So they find this fossil. This fossil is a dinosaur bird looking majabra. So you can see the bones of it and try to figure out what it would look like. It's an amazing find. It's almost entirely intact, it seems. Um, mammals then spread through the Cenozoic era, which is our era today. Uh, placental am animals, which is us. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but you're, you, when you were inside of your mom, at a placenta where you shared blood with your mom. So when your mom ate, you ate. That's how you stayed alive for all those months inside of her. Uh, and then humans appeared very, very late in this Cenozoic. We've only been around for a few hundred thousand years, which sounds like a lot, except when you're talking about 65 million years, a few hundred thousand is, is not a lot. It's kind of like if you have $65 and someone asks you for 40 cents. It's not that big of a deal at that point. All right, so that's it for section five of chapter 12.